excited to be here. Um, my name is Kim Earls and I'm the Executive Director for um, South Central Ontario Region Economic Development Corporation and we um, service the counties of Brent, Elgin, Middlesex, Norfolk and Oxford. Um, so I'm excited to be here. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce our first presenter, Amanda uh, Dooney. So Amanda is an agricultural entrepreneur uh, who lives in Norfolk County. She has a few businesses. So she has um, the farm that she operates with her family, as well as um, an agricultural tourism business, which is Ride the Vine. And um, we're really excited to have Amanda here and speak with us today. So Amanda, welcome and thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, allowing me to be a part of this great event. Um, I love that this is being held despite COVID. So uh, great to be a part. Um, yeah, so a little bit about myself. Thanks, Kim, for that great introduction. Um, I'm a Norfolk County girl, born and raised and still here today. Um, a little shout out to my hometown of Simcoe. Um, today would have been the opening day of the 180th edition of the Norfolk County Fair, which unfortunately had to be canceled due to COVID, but um, just a really, everyone's sad in Norfolk today. Um, it's just a great event celebrating all things agriculture, and I'm sure you all are very familiar with it. So a sad day, but we're hoping for 2021 we can be back at the Norfolk County Fair. Yeah, so a little bit about me. Um, I grew up on a former tobacco farm. Uh, both of my grandparents immigrated here and started tobacco farms. So um, I've got that kind of typical Norfolk County background. Um, really familiar with that hard work ethic and everything, which I think is really important in egg. Um, I went away to school to be a high school teacher. Um, I graduated, came back to Norfolk, and I had a really tough time getting into teaching. Um, so I was on the supply list for quite some time. Um, I worked on numerous other jobs while I was doing that just to make ends meet. Um, and I finally got to the point where I was really frustrated with the lack of jobs that um, I was looking around at Norfolk County. And at this time, we were kind of becoming a little hot spot for wineries and breweries. Um, so my friend Susan Judd and I, um, we decided to start a wine and beer tour business called Ride the Vine. So we officially launched in March of 2017. So we're into our fourth season. <laughs> um, it's been fantastic, uh, really great agritourism business. Again, celebrating some really fun things <laughs> that people enjoy to do. Um, drinking along the way and enjoying uh, all the great wineries and breweries in Norfolk County, along with some little food pieces along the way that we've also been able to sneak in. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that was a really interesting adventure. It's been a, <laughs> a very interesting adventure for me, um, starting a business, uh, starting from scratch, not knowing what you're doing. And, uh, but it's been great. And the best part of the job, I think, is just working with all the great local businesses and just being a local champion. Um, that's what Susan and I love most about uh, Ride the Vine is that we're these local champions and we just really love celebrating what we have um, in Southern Ontario. Um, so we started in Norfolk and we've actually expanded into London and a little bit and we've done a few tours in Elgin County and looking at doing some stuff in Brant. Fortunately, COVID's kind of put a hold on some of those plans, but again, we are kind of hoping to expand and celebrate into the other areas as well. Uh, a little bit about my farm. Uh, we're Suncrest Orchards. My husband and I have owned uh, the orchard, which is right in my backyard. I wish you could see it um, for the past two years. And uh, we grow 80 acres. So we have another farm near Waterford um, of high density apple orchard. We grow seven different varieties here. Uh, we have Paula Reds, Ginger Gold, Sunrise, Gala, Ambrosia. Golden Delicious and Honeycrisp. So all the delicious things that people love to eat. Um, just really love and enjoy being on the farm. Uh, 
so yeah, that's a little bit about me. I'm still running Ride the Vine. I'm still farming. Um, I'm also teaching at Fanshawe College in the Agribusiness Management Program, which I'll get into. So I'm a very busy girl, uh, but I do love it. And it's just really neat that all the little facets that I'm involved in are all a part of agriculture. Um, so yeah. Uh, a little bit about why I think people should get involved in agriculture. Um, if anything, I think we should all have learned from this pandemic that we all need to eat. <laughs> agriculture is very important. People need food. They need that secure, reliable food source. Um, I think that's kind of been proven by COVID. And uh, one thing I know we've learned, especially through the pandemic and all the wild, <laughs> weather events that we've experienced here on the farm today, or sorry, on the farm this year is, um, you just really have to be adaptable um, when you're working in agriculture. Um, weather is wild. We've experienced hail this year. We've experienced frost. Um, we've had to deal with the pandemic and having, struggling getting up help um, that we normally rely on. So it's been a really challenging year and as a farmer, it's just really important that you're able to adapt and go with the flow and try to figure things out as you go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so some other skill sets that I know this is all about agricultural skill, uh, skills for ag workers or people looking to uh, get a career in agriculture. Um, I think a really good work ethic is super important. Um, I mentioned earlier, I grew up on a former tobacco farm. My grandparents, they worked so hard to build what they had here in Norfolk, and that's why I'm here today. And uh, they're a big part of, uh, I think, why kind of we have our own little successful farm here is you're just, you got to be willing to put in those long, long, long hours and those long days and working in all kinds of conditions and dealing with the weather and mother nature and all the uh, challenges you know that might be thrown at you in any given year um so yeah a really good work ethic um you have to love especially if you're going to have a farm uh, you have to love working outside which i do <laughs> i am not a big fan of the accounting and bookkeeping which is part of my job on the farm here and i do do it but i try to put it off to those rainy days or evenings because I would just much rather be working outside all day long. Um, so again, yeah, if you're looking at getting into ag, definitely have a love for the outdoors um, and working with people in the industry. Um, some other things is just being resourceful, um, working with, with what you have. Sometimes when you're starting off, you might not have the top-notch equipment or the finances to kind of do what you need to do. So you just kind of have to be resourceful. Sometimes you got to borrow things from the neighbor. Um, so again, being resourceful, I think, is a really great skill to have um, to kind of build your little empire and uh, do things better. Uh, another thing, too, is don't be afraid to seek out opportunities to learn more and to educate yourself. Um, <clears throat> We had to learn a lot this year um, working with our local health unit. Um, we had some uh, pretty severe restrictions with regards to bunk houses and everything. So again, it's just being able to learn um, how, to, how to keep going, how to keep your farm going, um, and then working within some new restrictions that might be imposed on you. Um, there's definitely a lot to learn and there's a lot of opportunity in our local area and within Ontario to um, tap into some great resources. So here's my little plug for Fanshawe College. Um, our Simcoe campus uh, right here in Norfolk County has a fantastic agribusiness management um, program. Um, I'm so lucky to be a, a professor and a part of this great program. Um, it's in eight months long. Um, students will get uh, their agribusiness management certificate. Um, they're going to take courses in sales and marketing, human resources and relationship management, occupational health and safety, 
accounting and finance, food safety and traceability, safe handling and application of pesticides, pest, uh, pest management, um, and precision technologies such as GPS and drone applications. So really top notch, like best of the best. You're getting, you know, all those new skill sets that is really important in agriculture these days. Um, and I just think it's a really great, well-rounded program and they are going to be offering it next year. I think it'll be online. <laughs> Um, but yeah, definitely something for someone who's looking to get into ag, um, you'll end up being a really, you'll have a really well-rounded um, education following this. And it's not just for young people. I teach in the program and there's a lot of older people too who are just looking to develop more skills for their farm or perhaps a career change. So it's definitely an option out there. Um, that's for everyone. So yeah, that's my little plug for Fanshawe. Woohoo! <laughs> um, fantastic local uh, college to get into. So yeah, I think that's about it for me, but uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Amanda. That was amazing. Um, I like how you really touched on uh, the importance of being flexible, organized, and, and sort of that that business end of things. So really understanding that it it really is um, agriculture and owning a farm is really something that encompasses so many skills that people don't always take into account. So I'm glad you had the chance to sort of talk about that. And um, I'm a big supporter of the Fanshawe program, which I think is an amazing program for anybody that's looking to get into egg. So uh, that's fantastic. Are there any other um, questions? Um, uh, from any of the attendees that you'd maybe like to ask Amanda directly? Thank you, Kim. Um, I do have a question for Amanda. Um, wondering what the entry-level positions are like um, to get into farm work um, and what kind of training uh, comes with those positions, if any. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and what this year has taught us is we may not be able to rely on our um, like our work, our offshore workforce. So we're always looking to hire low pe local people if we can. Um, so Apple Orchard, um, definitely entry level. You don't need, and just for, you know, basic work on the farm, um, you don't need to have uh, a lot of different skills or anything. Everything can be taught on the farm. Um, we'll teach you how to prune the trees, we'll teach you how to plant the trees, um, we'll teach you how to maintain the trellis and the orchard, and of course we'll train people how to um, pick and harvest the apples. Um, both of my kids worked on the farm this year. Um, my son is 14 and my daughter is 12, so we had them working all summer long, and I mean if my kids can do it, anyone can, and they actually really enjoyed it this summer just working outside. So again, be willing to work outside. I think that's a big thing. And uh, there's, uh, I think when you're working in farming, especially us, I take a lot of pride that we're producing a great food source for Canadians. Sometimes I look at those little apples on the tree and I wonder whose lunches, you know, they might end up in and providing that really nice nourishing uh, food so people can do all the things they need to do and get done in a day. Great, thank you. Um, as well, what are the um, career options um, that you've seen um, come about from egg uh, careers? So if somebody is starting, um, you know, just as a farm hand, like your son and daughter has, um, have you, do you have any uh, examples of people who have sort of developed um, into um, other positions on farms um, and other trades relating to farm work? Um, one thing that I've definitely noticed that's become really popular is um, local CSA programs, so like community supported agriculture, um, which gives people to kind of be their own entrepreneur and start their own business and grow their own crops um, and then uh, have a little veggie box program that they can then uh, sell to local customers. Um, 
going back to Fanshawe, a lot of students who took my program, I actually got a message from a student last night um, and he asked for a reference because he's going to go work in management at a mushroom farm. So there's, there's just so much great opportunity indoors or out with egg and uh yeah it's it's just it's really exciting it's it's a good time to work in agriculture one of the things i just wanted to quickly mention to um come in and you and any of the panelists probably <clears throat> um reiterate this but i think one of the most important skills is dependability for for an agricultural operation the the skills and that, that sort of an entrepreneurial attitude is always great, but um, agriculture is one of those um, industries where um, it, it doesn't quit on the weekend. So, so the farmer really um, depends on you to be there as part of their team. And I think that's, that's something that's maybe not always recognized um, as you're entering into agriculture, how important that is. And, um, and how much camaraderie it brings to the field of agriculture. I think that it builds a real sense of family, but I just wanted to sort of throw that out there as well. Yes. Again, yeah, you're absolutely right, Kim. That's dependability and reliability are just so important. We really depend on the people who are harvesting our crop right now. So with apples, <clears throat> they're handpicked. Everything is handpicked. We'll have about a million pounds of fruit handpicked on just our farm alone. Um, and the crop has to be picked at the optimum ripe ripeness um, just for storability and for marketability. Um, so yeah, it's really important that we're able to pick that crop when it's ready and have it available and transported at its premium uh, ripeness. So yeah, dependability is, it's integral to our operations. I see there's a question in the, um, uh, in the chat uh, area that some um, uh, refers to how, how people use drones on the farm. So is that something that you deal with very much, Amanda, in your operation? Well, to be honest, we've had a few drones on the farm this year, um, more, more for fun use for photography. Um, but uh, drones are, can be used just to kind of see, give you that bird's eye view. Um, you can have a really great look at the soil. So maybe there's an area on your farm where you need to add nutrients and kind of build up that soil. Um, so yeah, drones can definitely uh, be used because it's going to help you see things that you might ne not necessarily see just walking around the farm. It'll really give you that bird's eye view of the farm and then it's great because then you have a three-dimensional or four-dimensional kind of look of your farm. So yeah, drones are definitely great to use on the farm and I think going forward we'll see a lot more of them for sure. Okay, are there any other questions for Amanda? Yes, Amanda. Um, there's a question regarding um, hours of work and the length of the season, typically in farming. So this varies from pro like agricultural product to product. Um, I'm going to talk about apples because that's what I know about. Um, so for instance, Apples slows down in the winter, you know, the trees go dormant and into hibernation. Um, and then we spend that time kind of prepping for next year, um, maintaining equipment, um, and then kind of reflecting on last year and what we can do better and improve in the next season. And then by February and March already, we're out to doing our pruning. Um, so we typically prune in the early spring when there's no leaves on the tree. That way you can see the whole tree structure. Uh, and then from then on, we're going right into probably the beginning of November. So the big harvest takes place from mid-August to the end of October. And then the last few weeks of the season, again, we're winterizing equipment and putting equipment away for the winter and just kind of catching up on anything we might have missed through the season. Um, but yeah, farming, I, in any, and with any product that you're producing is a year round job, a year round job, I would think. Um, there's definitely some highs and lows and some peak seasons and some busy seasons, but 
it's it's definitely a year-round thing um, though with work sometimes it can be more seasonal for sure um, there are definitely some full-time jobs in agriculture but there's also some great seasonal jobs too which I know do appeal to certain people perfect thank you um, Kim there doesn't appear to be any other questions if you have any others for Amanda yeah, I had a couple just things that I, I thought you might want to touch on, Amanda, is um, is the importance, so you talked about the importance of uh, being able, you know, you could teach people to prune the trees or, or those kinds of things, but, um, you know, within that seasonality of crops, do you, I think that you guys have mostly apples, but there are other farmers that have um, multiple crops that sort of, there's a bit of a, training continuum if you will so if you're um you know for instance if you're a farm that has apples but maybe you also have grapes or lavender um that there are maybe some other things and i know you're involved with um a lot of other farms in norfolk county in the area so i thought maybe you could uh speak to that as well yeah definitely um a lot of my friends who are farmers too actually we're kind of unlike the norm because a lot of my friends do grow a diverse array of agricultural products. They're not just one crop like we are. Um, so yeah, there's definitely some, some training to learn um, and it definitely varies from crop to crop, absolutely. Um, but the nice thing is for the most part, the work is repetitive. So once you kind of know it, it's quick and easy to learn and, uh, you know, you kind of, you're doing the same thing for the majority of, you know, your time in the morning or the afternoon or even the whole day. So really easy, farm work is really quick and easy to learn. Um, it is just about anybody can work on the farm. It's, it's easy to learn and it is a very great and rewarding job. Thank you so much. Um, I don't see any other questions at this point. I just wanted to take the opportunity, Amanda, to thank you once again and um, to really encourage everyone on the, uh, on the webinar today to uh, seek out Ride the Vine. It is a fun tour if you are in the area. You get to hang out with Amanda and Susan and, and get a great look at all the, uh, the fun places around um, the region that, uh, that there is to offer and, and to really consider ag um, as that uh, career. As Amanda mentioned, you know, it's, um, it is definitely something that's teachable and it's certainly, I think, a career that, um, that offers pride of what you're doing. So there is a real, um, you know, a real pride at the end of the day that you've, you've done something worthwhile and, and contributed to to the society in a in a great way. So anyway, I want to thank you so much for joining us, Amanda. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Thank you again for having me. Okay, well, thank you so much. Um, if there's any sort of questions for me, um, if not, we'll, we'll maybe move on. Our next presenter is um, Jackie Ryder from Ryder Farms. And um, Jackie's with us today excuse me, I'm losing my voice a little bit here, uh, to talk about farm management from a business perspective. And again, kind of reiterate the skills needed and, and the roles and responsibilities. And, and as Amanda um, discussed a little bit, sort of uh, Jackie will take us a little further into that, is, is agriculture is really a diverse sector and there are lots of, um, lots of opportunities for different skill set and um, things to do. So uh, please join me in welcoming Jackie. We're excited to have her here to join us today. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, thanks Amanda. That was great. You were a great lead into what I can contribute to the panel. But um, so I'm Jackie Ryder and uh, we are two Norfolk County growers. So my husband and I, we grow, um, it's about 800 acres all under cultivation and it's a combination of fresh market veg and ginseng and tobacco. Um, so we start out our season with asparagus, then we move into green onions, uh, like spring onions, bunching onions, uh, tobacco, um, sweet potatoes, and ginseng. Um, and it's just my husband and I. They're like he's a sixth generation farmer, but we have no other family members involved in the farm um, at the manage at the at the ownership level. It's just him and I. So we're a pretty dynamic team, and I would say we're not typical farmers in that. 
I was a full-time teacher at the high school level and I left that to be full-time on the farm with him as a team. Um, when I was teaching, I taught business, I taught, I, I did a bunch of guidance work and math and, and other, all kinds of things. But, and I, I, I thoroughly enjoy teaching and I love, te uh, love kids, but I love the farm in that every day we walk out our door and we get to see what we grow. We see the operation grow, we see the farm grow, we see the land improve, we see our kids grow. Um, it's a hugely rewarding kind of daily experience because, you know, you put your hard work in and you see it. You see it growing every day. And, um, Amanda talked a lot about like dependability and, and, and being there. That's one thing that like the farm is here every day. We are on the farm and it's not going anywhere. We can't pick it up and move it and it's here. So we're here um, and every day brings on it a new challenge. So one thing like, you know, that typical perspective of farmers, the guy with the straw in his mouth, doing the same thing every day, year after year, like it is not that anymore. It is such a dynamic profession. And I feel like on a daily basis, we wake up, we, we see the weather, we see what we're being dealt for the day and we pivot and change. Uh, there's nothing more consistent on the farm that I would say change. Uh, COVID has really opened people's eyes to the fact that everyone has to pivot and change. And in farming, my husband and I have looked at each other and said like, well, this is the every day. Yes, the pandemic is a little different. However, dealing with putting up fires daily, dealing with mother nature, what's the next kind of hurdle or struggle? Where's the next situation where we're going to need to be creative and resourceful to get over a hurdle or an obstacle? That's an everyday experience. So I would say one of the most important skills, along with hard work and dedication, comes resourcefulness, creativity, um, that ability and, and willingness to accept the things that you cannot change, but to also look at it and figure out how can I tackle this around the obstacles I've been tossed at, you know, um, you're constantly thinking on your feet. It, it is not a, like the days of doing the same thing again, like I said, year after year in the same way, it, those are gone in egg. It is, it is constantly changing. Technology has gotten so, so fast and the equipment is so much more technologically specific. Um, you know, between GPS technology, we spoke about drone technology and how we can use all of these new technologies in agriculture. That, that is such an emerging field in ag. The, the opportunities for young people who are interested in technology but don't want to be stuck in it office all day like egg is a perfect spot for them because there's so many little technical pieces and robotics there is a huge future of for robotics in agriculture specifically now that we look at our labor shortages some of the things that we've relied on human hands to do in 10 years we're not going to be able to do that anymore so the fit and the finish in there is going to have to include some robotics technology um I, again that uh, that like making sure that you can kind of handle the office side like the the business side of things you know I mean you can't just farms don't survive doing the same thing that they did two gener three generations ago you've got to be thinking on your feet you've got to be on top of what are some of the programs that are being offered through the government you have to also understand basics of business you need to know your cost of production you need to know where you're going to lose and where you're going to gain and where you need to invest your time and energies to move forward like you have to be on that so that's my side of the job of what i do more so you also need to be able to um understand people and manage people and find what people do best and, and give them the opportunity to grow and learn and do what they do best on the farm. So that human resource management is huge. There is a massive opportunity on Ontario farms for farm managers. So that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be the farm owner and have all the stress of the debt and all that other stuff that comes along with it. But what you will be able to do is stand beside the, you know, the owner, the farm owner, 
and manage and take on components of their business that they essentially don't have time for anymore. My husband, if he gets a day in the tractor now, that's like a honeymoon day for him because he is too busy doing everything else to actually do tractor work. So we've hired individuals that are work full time for us that they do majority of the of the outdoor like the track. He he's in his truck all day outside every day managing people. His office is his truck. Um, but we we hired lots of people that we can count on to do some very important specific field work. Um, I have a full office. I have an office person who works with me and her job is food safety. You need to have a scientific kind of perspective on things, a very analytical, because you have to break down the hazards in when it comes to food and food safety. That's a part of what I do. Um, Agronomy is massive. There is so many opportunity for crop specialists, people interested in agronomy, um, crop input applicators, chemical applicators, that it's a very technical and a very important job that we have to rely on people who are very skilled. There's a huge opportunity there. Um, manufacturing, people that can create and fabricate specialized pieces of equipment, uh, people who can help fix and repair equipment. Welding stainless steel is a huge one in the food industry. We struggle with finding welders and stainless steel uh, for ourselves. Electricians, <laughs> people who can do framing and construction because there's always a project. Um, those areas in with the connection to egg as well is huge. Um, I'm just trying to kind of, but I think that, I know there's lots of questions about hours of work. Yes, our days are long, but they're not long all year round. Um, we, we are, our season is much longer than most because we start harvesting something May 10th and we are harvesting at crop from May 10th through, it'll be till middle of November. So there is a crop that's being harvested, packed and stored here all that time. So it's busy. But, so we have work, full-time work for anybody for sure that long. But most Canadians that work for us really do work March through till, oh gosh, they'd like to think they're going to get January off, but that doesn't often happen. You know, we'll have some downtime in February, but we're like, it's, it's year round, but that winter time is more our time. So we do take breaks and we do maybe only work three days a week. And our, our salaried staff, that's how they work too. Or our hourly staff, they, you know, they can take some time off then. Um, so uh, there's lots of entry level jobs. And for us, those that show the willingness to, willingness to learn, adaptability, be able to think on their feet and problem solve, there's lots of opportunity. You know, you can start at the entry level, but it won't take you long if you can run a piece of equipment or you can um can pick up some of the food safety rec record keeping and and things that have to happen on the farm daily the opportunities are big like i see more and more and i don't think kids or people in ontario understand that you don't just have to be a farmer to work on a farm like you can be an office admin person and work on a farm and, and, and then guess what? You get to get outside every day. You're not stuck in an office like everybody else. Um, I think that's kind of a good overview of my perspective on the skills and what egg needs and how dynamic it is and how exciting I think egg is in this day and age. Um, does anybody have any questions? I see a question actually. Um, is Jackie, uh, do you have any idea of how much a, an average farm manager would earn? Well, that's kind of a because it depends on experience, obviously. But I could see, like, um, if you were to come in and and I would say most most farm managers are going to begin and start out earning between twenty and twenty two dollars an hour, and your hours will be long. And they will be varied, um, but I would say to 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 average in a startup wage thirty thousand dollars a year to st starting or more. Like it just depends on the hours that we're putting are put in and and the the place where you work. Um, you know, some salaried staff make sixty 
sixty to sixty five thousand dollars a year um, that's just on the farm and that's what I can sort of speak to but there's a broad range of hourly rates between yeah like the twenty to thirty dollars an hour thirty would be really high and have to be more of a very specific situation on each farm but I would say those wages are attainable. Sure. Okay. Thank you so much. That's really helpful. I think that really gives um, a little bit a more um, kind of detail to some of the things that people might might think about agriculture. So, for instance, when we think about agriculture, we do tend to think about those entry level, maybe laboring positions. But as you mentioned. You know, food safety is a, a big deal on any farm. So you have to really understand the scientific uh, end of things and, and how to create processes and, and how to um, make sure that the, the crops that you're uh, producing are moving um, on in a way that's safe if there, if there were an issue. So I think those things are, are really important and certainly the business end of, of things that you mentioned, the, um, the need to be flexible and, um, and creative and to be a real problem solver. So thank you so much for bringing all of those um, things to the forefront. Uh, is there any other questions for Jackie? Yes, Kim, there's a, a question regarding transferable skills um, from uh, the manufacturing and warehousing industry uh, to farming. So we may have um, um, some of our workforce uh, who are sick and tired of working indoors um, inside of a building all day long, um, perhaps working overnight shift, not seeing much of the outside. Is there a possibility uh, that the skills that they have from their career in manufacturing or warehousing could be transferred to, uh, to farm work? Absolutely. <laughs> like forklift, tr forklift lift truck driving, number one, absolutely. Um, like the, the movement of goods to and from the farm here is huge. Um, like just straight warehousing would probably not be a full-time gig in my operation, it wouldn't be, but if you were adaptable and willing to learn, there's all kinds of other jobs that could be added into that person that's sort of in a facility, I would say that person kind of would become like a facilities manager. So they could then, you know, to just be here. This needs to be unloaded. This needs to be put away. Where'd we put this? Can you get this out? Can you unload this trailer? You know, can you make sure the shipping and receiving documentation is correct for this load? Like every truck that goes out this door every every day or twice a day needs to have the proper paperwork. It needs to have the, the food safety paperwork and traceability paperwork filled in as well. Like that's all a part of what we do here. That might you know, tie in nicely, your answer there, uh at the end might tie in nicely to the next question that we have is how would a business degree fit into farming uh, for somebody who has no farm experience? Um, absolutely. Like I, uh, that's, I have a geography and business degree. So that's where my background is from. And if you understand the language of business, which is accounting essentially, then you can learn any business, you know, it's still, it's still basically assets and liabilities and put together. And all you need to do is you just, you'll learn it as it comes. Um, one of the things that farmers sometimes, and, and <laughs> Amanda alluded to it, is a lot of farmers don't love the numbers. They don't love the paperwork. There's a huge opportunity for people who are interested in doing some of the back end office work for farmers as a, in a consulting perspective. Like you could go and I have someone who I hire, she does books, to helps me with the bookkeeping because it's too much for me to do all on my own. Um, she comes and helps and does that. But with it, I, you know, I help many, many farmers who don't know how to do all of that. But there's a huge business opportunity for somebody that gets some experience in agriculture, starts their own consulting company and comes in and, and doesn't work as an accountant necessarily because farmers have accountants but works as a back-end bookkeeper or helps with them to let's say apply for grants and loans or helps them complete their LMIA applications yearly does food safety documentation develops um, workplace safety documents and and um, worker safety employee handbooks um, all of that kind of back-end admin work is difficult for farmers to do because guess what we're busy in the we're busy trying to make sure everything's done on a daily basis so that we call it winter work 
but when you've worked as hard as we do often throughout the summer, sometimes the winter work isn't really doesn't look really fun, so we don't want to do it. So for some of us, like if you can outsource that and there's people who can learn the basics and, and, and get an understanding, there's a there's an opportunity there. Huge. Huge. That's amazing. One other question. Um, how would somebody apply for a job specifically with your farm? Or, um, or any other farm for that matter? So that would be uh, like for me, I, I use uh, Indeed for job postings. I'll use the job bank because those are kind of requirements as well for my LMIAs that I use for my seasonal agricultural workers. I uh, This season we hired, uh, we called them our, our local warriors. They came in and worked and packed and did everything we needed them to do. I put a sign on the front yard with my email address and I got a lot of applications that way. Um, so if I have job postings, that's where I, I would often do that. I know there's the school, I'm, somebody might have to help me out here, SCORE, there's a Southwestern job bank. I know some people have looked at that, but it's not specific just to ag. Um, I would, yeah, that's where I would go to look for local uh, ag positions is some of those places. Um, somebody else might be able to chime in here with something better. I'm yeah, not so sure. I can also mention I have posted um, the website for your farm um, in the chat. Yes. Um, so there would be some contact information. There's absolutely contact information there. On your website there um, to message you. Um, as well, um, Grand Deary Jobs is a new job portal that's available from the Workforce Planning Board of Grand Deary's website. So that would be workforceplanningboard.org. And I can put that in the chat as well. Um, and you'll find on there uh, a new job platform um, that aggregates uh, jobs from a number of different uh, job boards like Indeed, um, which would pick up um, farm jobs that are available uh, in the Grand Erie area. So that would include Haldeman, Norfolk, uh, Brant Counties, Six Nations, New Credit, and the City of Brantford. And I'll throw it over to Kim, who could probably speak a little bit more about uh, Sure. So uh, th there's um, a similar platform um, called Local Jobs Hub um, that services uh, Oxford, uh, Middlesex, and Elgin uh, area. So if you're just a little bit out of this range, but but I also want to say that there's an opportunity. So to speak to the question, how would you uh, you, you know approach a farmer, apply for those jobs? I think if you're um, you know, looking for a job that's, um, you know, an immediate opening and you're just trying to get your foot in the door. I think Jackie's, um, you know, obviously right on target, connect it, you know, look on the farm job site and look on the, those job boards. But if you have a particular interest, so to the, the question that was um, about if you had a farm management uh, or a management, a business management degree, and, and you're really looking to get into ag, if there are farms that you think, oh, that that is just such a beautiful farm. I would love to work there. I'm really interested in what they're doing. I would say 99% of farmers that I know would be thrilled to have you send a resume to say, this is what I'm interested in. If you have anything that comes up, please keep me in mind and to start to build that relationship because I would say like no other maybe business position that I know of, agriculture really is a, a collaborative um, workspace. So any farmer that I, I, I know of or, or that I work with has, um, you know, that are looking for those types of, of employees to come on board are always um, thrilled to hear directly from you. And, and so I think that it's important to maybe start to establish those relationships. So, um, and I just wanted to make another quick point um, uh, Jackie, when you had mentioned um, about the business degree, you know, I was thinking back to the point you had made earlier about um, really understanding um, profit per acre for production. So that really is such an important skill. If you have that and are able to offer that to a farm, um, you know, you, you've provided yourself to be, you've already proven yourself to be a, a valuable employee and an asset to the operation. And so just wanted to make that comment. Is there any more questions uh, for Jackie? Uh, there are no more questions at this time. Um, if you'd like to move on to the next panelist, I think we're safe to do so. Sure. I, I just want to, Jackie, thank you so much. That was a lot of fantastic information and we certainly appreciate you being here. Thank Thanks you. for having me. I appreciate it. Thought I could help.
Okay, fantastic. And now we have um, with us Jeremy Eaton, who Jeremy has an exciting new um, program to share with us. And uh, we're excited to have him. Jeremy is with Conestoga College, and he'll be sharing some information uh, about some learning opportunities with us. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jeremy Eaton. Uh, I am going to introduce a new program today, but I wanted to give a little bit of background from my history too, uh, because similar to Jackie and Amanda, um, I started out um, as soon as I could walk around the yard uh, in whatever overalls they gave me, sitting on pails, watching uh, my grandfather, uncle, and uh, parents work, chasing whatever they needed done. Uh, and hopefully you've got the right thing they needed at that time. But uh, yeah, I, I born and raised in uh, Perth County. Uh, I was able to attend uh, Northwestern High School. And during that time frame, and even still to, to today, they have a farm equipment repair program that uh, they start in grade 10 and, and go through to grade 12. Uh, having graduated uh, Northwestern, I went on to uh, Fanshawe College to take the uh, farm equipment uh, technician repair program and was able to achieve a red seal uh, score it, it, for my C of Q. Uh, the one thing that has been really interesting for me is my farm life has, has given me uh, a can-do spirit. There wasn't always a time where you would be on Saturday night and had what you needed every time available to you. So you had to think outside the box. And that's allowed me in my career to move from a technician uh, apprentice into the role of a technician, uh, road technician, service manager, um, onto a role at Bobcat uh, out of North Dakota as a district uh, parts and service manager. And I covered an area from uh, one time from uh, Saskatchewan through to Newfoundland. Uh, including two of the uh, Jimmy Pattison John Deere dealerships at Yorkton and Swift Current. And even during all that time when I traveled, the one thing that was always interesting is you could always find a little restaurant in the middle of nowhere. And as long as you could talk about a tractor, a combine, or a cultivator, you had a friend for life. And uh, somebody would always sit down and enjoy dinner with you. So the farming community uh, is one that is broad reaching and they want to talk with you and they enjoy talking with you. And that is something that uh, I will forever uh, hold dear, near and dear to my heart. Um, I come from a, a, a cash crop background and um, it's a, a family farm that's, there's been three generations on it now. And uh, it's never been really big enough to support uh, everybody staying home. So there's a couple that stay home and, and there's a, a number of us that uh, work outside the farm and enjoy coming back on the weekends to, uh, um, even throw a few, a few square bales around or run a tractor cultivator and uh, even for like myself uh, I get to be the one that cleans up the mess that on the weekend that was made all week long and what was broken. Um, it's allowed me to join uh, a board of directors. I, I've been on the Stratford District Egg Society now for uh, 12 years, uh, three of which have been the second vice president. I've also uh, enjoyed my uh, being on the uh, board of directors for the Stratford Fall Fair. And um, it's just led to meeting a lot of really device, uh, diverse people. Uh, the program that we are rolling out here at Conestoga um, is an agriculture operator uh, pilot program. And uh, we are joined with our partners, the uh, Brant Federation, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Brant County, uh, Federal and Provincial Government, the South Centre Economic Development Corporation and uh, Workforce Planning Board. and when we had a chance, a bunch of us realized in April or March of this year in the, uh, the uh, Toronto Star ran a, a report that as of March this year, we were short 250,000 agricultural workers. And we all at that point sat down, put our heads together and said, we need to do something about that. Um, we sat down, we looked at some of the operator programs we had from the heavy equipment and we brought those best practices to uh, an egg foundation. So we're gonna cover things like safety. In this course, we'll be covering uh, the grower pesticide safety course so that the students will leave the program with, with their certification. We're gonna cover things like computers, uh, uh, 
computer applications, agricultural equipment in its entire freight from nuts and bolts from cash crop to specialty crops. Um, agriculture powered machines and non-powered machines. There's just such a variety of different equipment. The welding, we're, we're going to give them an opportunity to learn how to properly weld uh, two pieces of metal together so that they know it will reliably hold it while they're trying to use it. And we're going to cover the operation of farm equipment. Um, to Amanda's point, it's not, it's not always as easy as everybody thinks it is. There's a lot of controllers, there's a lot of uh, switches and, and just different things to even make things uh, go up and down. It, it, it's not as simple as it used to be where you grab the lever, you pulled it back and the hydraulics went. The, we have everything from auto steer to um, GPS units, um, planting's tied into that, cultivating's now tied into that. So it's, it's really grown into um, an incredible field that if you are interested in, especially computers or computer sciences, um, there's huge opportunity here. Um, that's about what I have for the new program. I'm excited by it. Uh, I've, it's a course that I will be part of and, and uh, teaching at the uh, Brantford location. And uh, I'll be, we'll, it will be uh, 16 weeks long at approximately 430 hours. And uh, we're going to tackle it in, from January uh, 21. And we'll also be doing another course in January of 22. So looking forward to it. Uh, I don't know about the other ladies that went ahead of me, but I can tell you that I have never been out of work. I've actually had more work than in some times I knew what to do with it. I never had to feel that, boy, oh boy, what was I going to do today? So it's been a great career, and um, I'm looking forward to the next portion of it. So. You're muted, Kim. Sorry. Thank you so much, Jeremy. I really appreciate that, and I I'm so appreciative of the point that you brought up um, that you covered welding and um, mechanical crops and, and that there's such a diverse array of equipment. Uh, I think people just often think farm and tractors, but there is so much equipment and so much technology involved. The inside of a, of a farm uh, piece of equipment now is akin to uh, a NASA shuttle like it is quite <laughs> technically um, advanced now so I really um, I really appreciate all of that uh, um, specific information one of the questions that I um, wanted to bring up is uh, so if if I was interested in taking the course would, would I have need any um, previous background in farming or in any equipment operation or 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 would I um would the course provide all that for someone starting out this course is designed to help somebody that has never driven a tractor or a combine uh any of that equipment we're going to take them right from the ground roots level and build them back or build them up to that they're a competent operator uh, in 14 the reality is in 16 weeks I can't make them uh, high and proficient, but I can make them so that they have the skills that are needed to go and, and visit Amanda or um, uh, Jackie and say, I you know, at least know competently I can operate that tractor and allow them to finish the training on the job in the farm uh, with what their farms need. So uh, at least they'll be able to go with the basics and, and know that they can look after that. It, it, some of this equipment is, is it's the price of a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. And a lot of people in the city don't realize that all of a sudden you're talking about a half a million dollar combine and a quarter of a million dollar tractor and a $200,000 buggy. And you haven't even put diesel fuel in it at this point. And, or even had enjoyed the, the coffee and a sandwich at the end of the field while you're <laughs> talking with each other. So it's, it's huge costs. It's huge uh, demands. And it, it's... And when things break, they, they're not cheap anymore. It, it's, it's an expensive uh, place to... Yeah. Kim, I have a question for Jeremy. Um, how can somebody um, uh, find out more about this program? I understand that you've got some information at your booth today in the exhibit hall. Yes, Abby, um, it will be there in the, uh, and you can speak to her and she is uh, 
as up to speed as I am on the program and she will teach you or talk to you about signing up. She's actually much more proficient about the sign up of the students than I am. I'm just gonna make sure that my part is to the, give them the education once they get there, so. That's awesome. Are there any other questions for Jeremy at this point? Hi, Kim. Uh, there are no other questions uh, right now in the Q&A box. Um, I think we're safe to move on to the next panelist. Um, uh, but we do invite anybody uh, in the audience uh, to use the Q&A function, uh, typically located at the bottom of your screen. If you do have any questions, um, when we get to a break, um, we can ask questions. Um, and feel free if you have a question for Jeremy, you know, 10 minutes from now uh, and it comes to you, uh, type it in there and we'll do our best to get you an answer before the end of the webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jeremy. I, I'm excited about this program and, and I think it's um, really going to be such a benefit for anybody looking to enter the ag field or, or that even just needs a refresher that you're already in the ag field. So thank you so much uh, for taking us through that. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, next we have Liz, and I apologize, Liz, if I get your last name incorrect, Medlinger? Very good. Ah, okay. <laughs> and Liz is from University of Guelph, the Ridgetown campus. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, University of Guelph has such, you know, they are the egg. Uh, program uh, for many um, projects in the area. And so we're super excited to have Liz here uh, to talk to us today. Liz? Thank you so much. And I, I think maybe you have some slides for me this afternoon. Yes, we do. Winona's just getting those set up for you. Okay. So thank you so much for the technical assistance. I'm a, a low tech girl. So good afternoon, everyone. And thanks so much for the invitation to speak to you this afternoon. My name is Liz Medlinger and I'm the Manager of Communications and Student Recruitment at the University of Guelph Bridgetown campus and we appreciate the invitation today and, and as you mentioned um, the University of Guelph has a long long history of agriculture and we still we take great pride today and in, in the future in uh, agri-food and helping feed the world. I've, uh, I did grow up on a dairy farm in Prince Edward County which is in eastern Ontario and I attended the University of Guelph and I completed a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture with a co-op program in crop science. And after that, I spent some time as a management trainee with a large agribusiness. And then I had the opportunity to go work in a co-op education program at the University of Guelph Bridgetown campus. And I've had the tremendous privilege to work at the University of Guelph Bridgetown campus for over a quarter century. And uh, I think I have the best job on campus or the best job in Ontario. I just, I love my work. And it's a privilege for me to share some comments this afternoon. And I do want to just mention that the panelists who have spoke so far, I really appreciated a number of your comments. You've made some super excellent points today. And I've taken a bit of a broader look at um, agriculture careers and building your skills and how you might build those. And just before we go on, I guess I'll mention we are approaching our 70th year of offering an agriculture diploma. And I'm uh, pretty excited about that. So maybe the next slide, please. I guess I want to talk about building your career and I'm not sure who all my audience members are today, but um, I can quickly go back to when I was younger and I've, I've had the privilege to work with hundreds of students as they began their post-secondary studies and, and look to go work in the agro world. And so I think it's really important to do three things and I want to touch base on all of them. I think it's important to get some post-secondary education and then to add some good practical work experience to build your skill sets. And then to also add volunteer experience. And I just, if you remember one thing today, I hope it's that you should never underestimate all of the various experiences that you get on your career journey because they will, they will come together and they will add up to help you find the career you're looking for. And the next slide. Just a little bit about um, getting related post-secondary education and I do need to mention a little bit about our, our agriculture diploma program at the Ridgetown campus and as I mentioned we've had it been delivering this program for a long time and we're excited to be, be delivering our ag diploma virtually this year and that's a new experience for us which we're all learning lots from. We do have um, 20 to 22 applied research scientists who all work in agriculture at the Ridgetown campus 
And all of their work is very applied and an applied research scientist really takes um, issues from farmers and farm commodity groups and helps address them on campus. We also attract students from across the province, every corner of the province, and these students enjoy studying together and they all share the same passion for, for agribusiness. And, and I look at agribusiness really broadly. I look at it from important roles on large on farms in Ontario to feed, seed, fertilizer, egg chem, uh, this, the list goes on and on. So I look at agribusiness as a really broad industry and as a local, provincial, national and global opportunity for students. One of the things I wanted to mention, and, and I think uh, the other panelists will agree, there are lots of job opportunities in Ontario agriculture today or in agriculture around the globe. And our, our placement rate for ag diploma grads has been 95 to 99%. And that's been good. That's been steady for, I'd say, at least the, the past 10 years. So everyone and everyone has different skills, different interests and different abilities. But uh, we have an extremely high job placement rate, which is a really important thing for students to look for when they're considering their post-secondary education. And we've had a, you know, a long history of agriculture being um, a, a man's world and and when I graduated quite a few years ago that might have been the case and it started to change and it's been changing nicely and I'm really excited to say that we have close to a 50-50 male-female student ratio in our egg diploma program and there are phenomenal opportunities for young men and young women um, in egg careers. So well, I think it's important to have your education choice enhance your overall knowledge and skills and Agriculture certainly needs good people, but uh, Jackie helped make this point. We need good people from all different backgrounds. So you might consider an ag diploma, degree, post diploma, but we need people with business backgrounds, computer backgrounds, transportation, accounting, engineering, um, science, et cetera. And all of those backgrounds are, are very useful and critical to our ag industry. So I encourage anyone thinking about an ag career to start um, with some post-secondary education, that's of interest to them. But it may not be in an ag diploma, it may be in a science degree or a business diploma. But get some, get some good post-secondary education and that will be a great start. And next slide. Because I think it's really important to add, to combine your academics with work experience. And um, I think it's good to build, build, build and continue to build those experiences. And rather you start with summer jobs or co-op programs, internships, job shadowing, career fairs like today, or you work over the holidays on a farm next door or the agribusiness the other side of town. Um, if you can find some great employers to work with, they will help you tremendously in building your skills for your, your ag career. And you know, if you find great employers, that's just a bonus. And sometimes you'll have experiences, which I've had, and your employer isn't always the best, but you will learn from all of those employers. You will learn from the tremendous ones and you will learn from the not so great ones. You'll learn about things you like, don't like, but you can always learn from a work experience. And if you can find some supervisors, some managers and supervisors I think are particularly gifted at helping mentor young people or first time people in the industry. And one of my first jobs after I graduated, our boss took us out for breakfast every Saturday morning and we talked about what was going on at the co-op I worked for and what was you know some of the challenges and he he really helped me learn a lot and I took that that little trick and you know for a long time and to today I take my employees out for breakfast sometimes and we have a chat about what's going on at work and how we're going to handle things and and I try to mentor as many young people as I can on my uh, on my career journey so I think it's great you need to add work experience it can be really diversified um, I think you, it's good if you are, you know, aiming to continue to build your career to, to get diversified work experience whenever you can. And, and that's not always easy depending on where you live and what else is going on in your life. But if you could spend some time working in, and these are just examples, but if you could spend some time working in egg production and then egg marketing, selling grain, selling crops, possibly working in communications, working in logistics, or, 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 the list goes on and on. But if you can diversify your work experience and get some different experiences in your first few years, 
I really think that helps you land that, that dream job that you're looking at. And I've always told students when they graduate, you'll find that dream job and be in the dream job you want probably about five years after you graduate. Okay, next slide. I think we missed one, okay. I always encourage students to, to, to add volunteer experiences to their resume and to their life story. And I think they, volunteer experiences, whether it's on a campus or at a college, university, or in a community, really help students build their, skill, their skills and their knowledge and their confidence. And one of the programs I've had the privilege to work with for a long time at the Ridgetown campus is to work with a number of students from all programs and they are ambassadors for our campus. And they come from all kinds of backgrounds and all kinds of abilities. And they help us with future student recruitment. And we do our very best on our end to help them build their life story and to share that with others. And we help them to build some self-confidence. And we ask them to do some public speaking and we help them with it. And a number of them are quite shy when they come into the program and quite scared to death about making a public appearance or a, a pu public comments. And we make sure they're prepared and we help them with scripting and we help them practice and they knock it out of the ballpark when they deliver. And all of these little things add up, I think, um, to help them build their skills to be in a successful egg career. And we always tell them they need to know who they are and they need to have their story ready. And I think anyone who's looking to be successful in an egg career um, as you're starting out needs to be able to say this is me this is what I'm about and here's why I'm passionate about agriculture and, and they should always have that story in their back, po back pocket because you never know who you'll meet when you're at a career fair or um, uptown or on campus. So I think these um, building transferable skills which have been mentioned before is super important and and we work hard to help students build transferable, transferable skills as well. And I think employers really like to see volunteer activities and campus activities um, on resumes and it really helps students, it helps employers understand more about the students and graduates that they're getting to know. So I think it's great to add volunteer experience and I hope that you can pick volunteer experiences that you enjoy doing. Um, there may be volunteer experiences that aren't so great, but if you can find and enjoy volunteer experiences that also build your story and help you build your resume, I think you'll be off to a great start. And the last slide. So I guess I'm, I'm, I've been mentioning, I think it's important to get some good post-secondary education. It doesn't have to start with an, an agriculture program. It could be another program and then you could combine it with something in ag, or you could take some of the, those other diplomas and degrees and find a phenomenal career in agriculture. And this afternoon you've mentioned quite a few local places you can find farm and, and agribusiness jobs and there's certainly lots of them. One of my favorites that I um, promote to students and people considering a career in agriculture is to look at agcareers.com. They've been around probably for 20 years and most days they host a few thousand jobs in agriculture, agribusiness around the globe. You can search their site by, um, by country, or by province or by region within a province. And when I wanna get a sense of what the opportunities are in agriculture, I go and I spend a few minutes on the eggcareers.com site. So those are my thoughts on uh, kind of starting and then building an ag career. And if you're interested in the ag diploma at the Ridgetown campus, we are having a number of live sessions this fall. You can check out our website. We're offering uh, a few different options for virtual recruitment initiatives to help future students understand the opportunities. So I think I'll leave it at that. And I guess in a final comment is agriculture is big business. It's a Im critically important business. And I think there are opportunities from the backyard to around the globe in agriculture. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Liz, thank you so much. That was fantastic. Um, are there any questions right away for Liz? Hi Kim. Um, there, there is no, there are no questions at the at this moment in the in the Q and A box. Okay. I just I wanted to Liz say thank you for mentioning ag careers because that is fantastic. And I'm just going to take a couple seconds to kind of add to that and um, uh, plug a recent toolkit. They partnered recently with the Ontario Federation of 
agriculture and um, um, they're looking at uh, Feeding Your Future, which is a, um, a project that they've combined on along with um, my organization, SCORE EDC, to really help you look at some of the opportunities within the agricultural sector. So I want to take a couple minutes to thank you, Liz, for, for bringing that forward. And, um, uh, and I really liked your comment about, um, you know, you can learn anything even even from a bad employer situation. I think that's so true. We, uh, we, we sometimes don't see it when we're in the midst of it, but that is definitely, um, I think, a life lesson that's well worth uh, reiterating. <laughs> so thank you so much for all the great information. And I see that um, it's already posted in the chat box, but if you need any further information, um, you can connect, I think, with Liz through um, the Bridgetown campus. Um, Liz, thank you so much for being here with us today. Okay, and our next presenter is Danielle Murray from VG Meets. Um, Danielle, um, thank you so much for being with us here today. Uh, I'm not going to cut into any of your time. I'll let you just uh, jump right in. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Kim. Um, I'm Danielle, and I've worked at BG Meats since March of 2019. I also have a background in farming. I used to own a farm with my ex-husband and know Jackie and Jason. I went to school with them, so there's history there. Um, BG Meats is a third-generation company that started out in processing and butchery, but their second generation decided to expand the business and get right into the farming so that everything that they process and butcher is right from their own. So while they began in processing, um, they have advanced methods and technologies used in these processes toward product development starting right on the farm. So an example of this is their innovative approach to their tenderness testing that traces the performance of their beef from the plate back to the farm. And in doing so, they found that hormone implants led to tenderness issues. And so they've adjusted and they've branched out into regenerative farming and they've made um, huge advances in with their high care methodology and small herd um, practices. And they've furthered that relationship with any of the partners that they have. And they all focus on the same thing. So right now our focus is our regenerative farming and pushing our, or not pushing, but um, promoting our butchery department as um, a skilled trade because it's kind of an old skill, an old school skilled trade that is almost forgotten. But what we like to do or how we like to prom promote this is that um, we like to tell candidates, applicants, uh, employees that we are dedicated to training them and to helping them develop their career as part of a skilled trade in, in that department. Um, let me just look at my notes here for a second. Um, so what this means is that we're gonna take someone who necessarily doesn't have any training at all and bring them in and start them off in the very basics of, of our, our program and teach them all the things that they would need to learn to advance in the stages to become an actual trained butcher. Um, we offer, so that not only are they getting um, the benefit of, of all the experience that the butchers that we have, have have to offer, but because BG Meats is the farm, the slaughterhouse, the processing plant, all in one, our trainees and our experienced butchers are exposed to that full unique experience that is really not comparable anywhere else. We offer employment in a dynamic environment with cross-training opportunities to gain as much on-the-job experience as possible. Um, at VG's, we pride ourselves on encouraging the employees that work for us 
to participate in improving our processes through collaboration and innovation with a focus on continuous improvement. Um, and we invite all those who share the vision to develop their career with BG Meets. I myself started in the plant back in March of 2009. I worked back there beside the butchery department um, and on the Preserva line in the processing plant and have now become, the last year I'm now in HR and um, because we still are a smaller company, I have a dual title, um, so I'm HR and administrative assistant, but we are, we're growing. Um, three generations, two stores, the plants, the farms, and a vision, so yeah. That's BG Me. Thank you so much, Daniel. I, uh, I've had the great privilege of working with um, BG Meats myself in my career, so I know that they um, they really are that full experience of farm to retail. And I've I've had the opportunity uh, for some, you know, of you, of you that don't know is um, you know BG Meats also supplies product to. Um, people in, in healthcare institutions. And, and so I know that for them that it is so important to have the highest quality of product. And so, um, you know, if you're looking for a, a field that's um, a career in agriculture that has also some retail and some, um, as Danielle said, some opportunities within uh, the uh, processing end of things and sort of that butchering, um, that is something that I, I think are careers that are in high demand and, and maybe are not always um, on the forefront of everyone's mind. So thank you so much, Danielle. Uh, Danette, do we have any questions for Danielle? Kim, no, there are no questions uh, at this time in the Q&A box. I have um, supplied um, in the chat box the uh, web address uh, for the career section um, of BG Meet. So if there's anybody that's interested, um, they can go uh, direct to the website um, uh, to make application, I'm assuming. Is that correct, Danielle? Absolutely. Okay. And is there a telephone number or anything that you would want me to provide or an email address? Um, they can email me directly at jobs at bgmeets.ca or they can call me at 226-534-1647. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel. That was fantastic information. I really Thank appreciate you. that. Thank um, you. Sorry, I see everyone mute there. My apologies. Um, we'll jump right in uh, to uh, connect with our next panelist, Lind Lindsay Richardson. And Lindsay is also from Conestoga College. Thank you so much for being with us here today, Lindsay. Um, please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for having me. I am going to try and share my screen to share a presentation with you. And if you could let me know if you can see it, that would be most appreciated. Oh, excellent. I got a thumbs up. So thank you for having me today. So I'm going to go on a slightly different avenue in a supportive of agriculture role. I am a coordinator and professor at Conestoga College, and I'm part of the Institute of Food Processing Technology. And I specifically teach and coordinate the Food Processing Technician Program. There's my email if you would like to reach out to me. Uh, some of my background through the food manufacturing industry is that I have a Bachelor of Science in Engineering from the University of Guelph. I did Biological and Food Engineering from U of G. And of course, that was a great connection being the agricultural school. And my employment history has included Bacardi Canada, PepsiCo Frito-Lay, and Johnson & Johnson Pharmaceuticals. So I've had an absolutely fantastic time in manufacturing. And today I'm going to champion why it could be absolutely fantastic for you to also think about a career in manufacturing. So 
Agriculture and food processing. So you might have seen a lot of stats today, but I went on to the OMAFRA website and also the Food and Beverage Ontario website, and there are more than 57,000 farms in Ontario growing over 200 different agricultural commodities. So there is a wealth of opportunity there that could support our agricultural community. So Ontario specifically, their food processing sector is the third largest in North America. And you have yearly sales of more than 34 billion. And there are over 4,000 food and beverage manufacturers in Ontario. And something to consider, even when we're down and out with COVID, you're going to eat. When the economy is going great, we're going to eat. So it's a fantastic industry to get into from agriculture and food manufacturing for job stability and job growth. So agriculture naturally leads into the processing industry. Um, the processing industry will support the distribution, sorting, processing, packaging, and storage of all the agriculture outputs from the farms. So all those raw materials and products that are made to support the food supply chain. And another little tidbit there is that the Ontario food processing sector purchases 65% of Ontario's farm products. So when you hear that someone is harvesting from May 10th to mid-November, all of that processing, a lot of it happens within Ontario, which is truly fantastic. You can eat local and work local in this industry. When we talk about food processing careers, there is a huge breadth of job opportunities for any individual to get into. It's a high tech industry. As we've heard, we're getting more and more modernized as time goes on. You need to produce more items faster. And this is causing us to need advanced and specific skills for the operation and the repair of processing and packaging equipment. So when you think about jobs, you could think about installation, operation, maintenance, repair, adjustment and calibration of all of this equipment. And then you also need to have your own personal skills. You need to be flexible, dynamic, detail oriented and a problem solver. And this is really important. Anyone who has worked through agricultural um, backgrounds, farms, food manufacturing, or really any type of manufacturing will understand that there really are no two days the same when you are on the job. There'll be different challenges that you encounter every day to get to your targeted end result. And that's where we need those flexible, detail-oriented, problem-solving individuals who enjoy seeing their output and their work produce something on a daily basis. Food processing also requires significant support from food safety and quality assurance roles. So if you are in a background of business or food safety, microbiology, chemistry, there are a lot of roles that support food agriculture and food processing from the testing and assessment of the food products, your safety and HACCP program development, process validation, which refers to the proving that your system can consistently manufacture quality products using the raw materials, and research and development. All of those new products, new food items that you see on the shelves require all of the agricultural inputs and the food processing careers to make that happen. So some example processing uh, career opportunities that you might not have considered can be anything from production workers to sanitation workers. You may be a highly skilled maintenance technician, a production lead hand supervisor or even manager, and you may even want to consider being a packaging technician. Um, there's a lot of education opportunities that can bring you into these fields and some of the ones we like to feature are apprenticeships. Uh, you may have a company that is willing to support um, you learning to become a millwright or an electrician. There's the program I teach in specifically at Conestoga College, which is the food processing technician diploma. And we do teach that at Conestoga College in the Cambridge campus. I mentioned earlier that we are part of the Institute of Food Processing Technology. And what that is, is that we have a very large facility at the Cambridge campus of Conestoga College. And we have a specialized training facility um, for the food industry. 
So we have essentially three major manufacturing cells to handle uh, vegetable processing, beverage processing, and bakery items within the Conestoga College environment, as well as the microbiology lab and the maintenance shops to help you learn the technical aspect as well. And we also have uh, diploma programs that are only a year long that you can take for food safety and quality assurance diplomas, as well as a operations leadership in food manufacturing diploma that you could consider as well. And this may give you that little bit of an edge where you could take all of your previous experiences, add in some new knowledge that is applicable um, to the agricultural and food processing industry and in a relatively short period of time. And I really appreciate that everyone's been talking about development opportunities. I think it's very important that if you're in high school, maybe you look for a co-op placement the, through manufacturing, get your feet wet, see what you like, or even try to enroll into a co-op placement program so that you are developing your on-the-job experience. And it, nothing beats real life experience. And then if you have the opportunity, look for manufacturing positions that are maybe full-time or part-time to grow um, your development in these areas. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that, but it's just another opportunity for you to consider uh, a different avenue that also supports the agricultural industry. There is lots of jobs. All of my graduates are hired every year into the industry, and typically the pay range has been about $40,000 to $50,000 a year for a food processing technician role. Okay, and if anyone has any questions, I would love to answer them. Lindsay, thank you so much. That was fantastic information. I have had the opportunity to uh, tour the facility there a couple times. Um, so I've seen firsthand the great um, hands-on experience that you get in the, the bottling area and the bakery and, and the food processing. So um, it, it really is a fantastic um, addition for um, training and, and learning within uh, as someone that's considering the food processing uh, industry for a career. So thank you so much. Binette, any questions um, specific for Lindsay? Uh, no specific questions for Lindsay in the Q&A box. Okay, thank you so much, Lindsay. That was fantastic information. Uh, we're very lucky to have had you here today. Um, and now uh, I have the opportunity to um, introduce Cam Shaw, who Cam is also at the uh, University of Guelph, and Cam is in the, um, excuse me, the turf management uh, program. Cam, welcome. Thank you so much. Hi there. Uh, I guess I'll just do a quick introduction. Um, obviously, Cam Shaw. I've been working in the turf grass industry for pretty much my entire life. I started mowing lawns when I was 12 years old for cash from my neighbors and that slowly, uh, very organically blo blossomed into a career for me. Um, but not really in the way that you might expect. And this is one of the biggest problems turf has and I'm going to get into some of this in a little bit. But I didn't actually get into turf uh, as a career path until I was 28 years old. So I enrolled in the diploma program here at the University of Guelph as a mature student. And this is actually uh, quite common because one of the things we, we've talked a lot about today about how ag careers suffer from this misconception that it's just a farmer, a male farmer on a tractor sowing oats and fields, uh, which obviously we all know now after many of the presentations today, that ag is so much a more exciting and robust industry than that. Turf, we are a form of agriculture, but no one even knows we exist. Uh, so when I was in many, uh, in the shoes, just like many of the people here in today's seminar, uh, no one was telling me about options and career in, in turf grass management. And so I pursued another career path all the while. Actually, I loved golfing. And so I worked on a golf course over the summer and slowly got promoted, uh, still not thinking about it as a career path. and. It was much later in my life, actually, where I just sort of applied seasonally at a, at a hotel and they happened to have a golf course and they saw I had some experience and I ended up getting promoted into a supervisor's position. And so I sort of, did, I fell into turf, but I fell in love with it 
and then ultimately at a mature age had to decide where I wanted to go. And so I wish when I was in high school and I was uh, pursuing uh, the thoughts about where I wanted to go with my life, I had an opportunity for someone to tell me about a career path in turf. And so some of you right now might be asking yourself, what is turf management? Well, turf management is the procurement of fine grass surfaces like the one behind me here. And I'm not talking about grass surfaces that you'd find in your backyard or your front yard at home. I'm talking about highly used and maintained surfaces like BMO Field where MLS soccer plays. Um, uh, I'm talking about golf courses. They get a lot of traffic, especially now during COVID. It's one of the few sports that was allowed to be played. Um, I'm talking about sod production. I'm talking about municipal parks. Okay, so all of our students that graduate from our program here, the, the Diploma in Turf Grass Management program at the University of Guelph, go off to become assistant or golf course superintendents, municipal parks managers, sports field managers, sod producers, landscapers, lawn care operators, horticulturalists that dabble in turf management as well. Uh, some go on to be agronomic consultants, which is a phenomenal career, lots of opportunities there right now. Uh, as well as many of our students use our diploma as a stepping stone towards a landscape architecture degree and then go back and help uh, design green spaces, live in green spaces in many uh, places that we enjoy today. Many, uh, some of you are enjoying the outdoors and you're in a municipal park. Someone had to design that park and someone has to come up with a management plan to maintain that park or that sports field or that golf course. Okay, so I now work at the University of Guelph. I, I took a sidestep in my career uh, in golf, uh, and I now work more closely with the research and education side of things. Um, but the industry, the fact that I'm here and I have access to talking about careers in turf, uh, is the, in, the whole turf industry is just overly excited about it because if you haven't caught on, there's a massive pattern emerging here from all the panelists, which is that there's lots of opportunity, right? Uh, if you're going to choose a career path, it's very wise to pick something that you know when you graduate, there's going to be opportunities for you. Well, turf is very much the same. Uh, I, would, I would say that we have consistently, since our program's inception, had a 100% hire rate for all of our students. The only reason we haven't had a student getting hired is because they didn't want to work. They almost all go into entry-level management jobs, which uh, pay very differently depending on the sector that you go in. Uh, if I had to throw some examples out, we had a second assistance job at a relatively high-end private club uh, that was posted on our job board here at the university. Uh, the starting wage was $50,000, full benefits package, our RSP contributions, professional development package somewhere in the round of, uh, of $1,000 to $1,500. That means they're sending you to conferences, they're sending you to seminars, they're sending you off for professional training so that you can continue to build your resume to get to the next step of your career. Um, not a single person applied for that job. That's how much opportunity there is in this industry that a $50,000 job with benefits and compensation plan uh, gets not a single applicant for it. So uh, lots and lots of opportunity in turf. So I just wanted to talk a little bit, for those of you that may be unfamiliar with the turf grass field, uh, what some of the skill sets are that turf managers have. Now really, we're a group of people that are a jack of all trades. Uh, turf managers are construction specialists, we're project managers, we're people managers, we're irrigation specialists, we work with plumbing, carpentry, budget management, computers, we're problem solvers, very, very resourceful, high pressure jobs, especially in the golf course market. That makes up about, I'd say 60 to 70% of our students aspire to be in the golf industry. Uh, mechanical repairs, chainsaw operation, lots of cutting of trees in the winter to bring in light and airflow to, pro to produce a good growing environment for grasses. Uh, biology, science fields like entomology, uh, agronomics, understanding soils, cation exchange capacity, which is the, the uh, measurement of, an, of a soil's ability to hold on to nutrients so you can produce good, healthy plants that can sustain traffic, uh, that can sustain cleat damage from footballs or football players. Um, obviously, a lot of skills in this field um, and 
and we often find why people love it so much. They're in the middle of pursuing some other career in economics or law or engineering, and all the while they're working on a golf course or with a landscaping company, uh, and they love working outdoors. They love working with their hands. They love the natural world. They love being stewards of the land. Uh, they love working in a team environment that's fast paced and dynamic that is never the same from one day to another. Um, obviously physical work, it, it's, you have to be very physically fit to do this job because you're out, you're doing a lot of lifting, bending, walking, dragging hose, uh, all these wonderful things. Um, all of our students love our program here at the University of Guelph. It's a two-year uh, associate diploma program. In those two years, you gain access to basically all of the skill sets I just talked about. Problem solving, we do a little bit of construction work, learning how to grade, uh, install drainage, uh, landscape design. There's some computer-aided design using CAD to, to uh, learn how to execute some of your landscape design principles. Uh, in the middle of our year, so first, first years and second year divided by one summer, our students are mandated to complete an internship which is a placement inside the career path that they want to be in. Uh, part of our program is preparing students to gain access to the correct internship that's suited for their personal skill set and is suited in order to develop a contract so that the student that's enrolled in that, um, in that internship is filling the gaps of skills that they personally don't have. And that's the whole biggest part of our program is that we have each of our students work with an instructor to do a skills assessment because all of them come in with different level of experience and need different things in order to get to where they want to be. So we do these skills assessments, we get them in a placement for where they want to go. Our students go all over the world. I myself went down and worked for the PGA Tour in Boston. Uh, we have students that go to New Zealand, Australia. We had two students go to France uh, a few years ago. The UK, uh, uh, we've had them go to Germany, all over the US. Uh, we've had students that go to work with Major League Soccer, so interning at BMO Field. In fact, the, the field manager at BMO Field in Toronto is a grad of our program. Uh, we've had students that go down and work for Major League Baseball, PGA Tour, the NFL. Uh, we have a student who actually is uh, one of the field managers at Wimbledon. So uh, there's a, a massive amount of opportunity. One of the things our students love is that no matter where you go in the world, there's grass growing somewhere. And so you can, uh, while you're young and you're mobile before you start your family life, you can go and travel and do this. And all the while, while you're doing this travel and your and your and your experience uh, adventure, you're also still continuing to build your professional development and your resume, so that when you decide to come back and plant roots, uh, you haven't taken a year off. So um, lots and lots and lots of opportunity and I don't have enough time to, to talk about it all but certainly uh, just an opportunity for me to plant the seed uh, in uh, in your head no pun intended uh, that there is there, there is lots of opportunity in turf and and if you enjoy playing sports you enjoy working in a team environment you love being outdoors love being in the elements seeing the sunrise in the morning and sipping your coffee while mowing a green, the smell of fresh black grass clippings, these kinds of things, uh, you can easily make a, a lovely career. And if I could leave you with a little tantalizing uh, thought, uh, some of the things that you can work towards, you know, I said our, gra our graduates get offered somewhere in the salary range of forty to $50,000 a year full-time jobs. Uh, some of the career aspiration positions you may be thinking about uh, top level superintendents make well over $100,000 across Canada. Not all of them, but the, the, the elites. Um, and I actually just saw a posting. This is one that came through from the uh, Haldeman County. It was a recreation and uh, parks and cemeteries manager. Uh, now, obviously, our students wouldn't be fit for this right out of the gate, but this is something they would be slowly working towards post-graduation. Uh, 35 hours a week, full benefits, you go 35 hours a week, did you catch that? Many of the other panelists were talking about long, hard hours during the, during the summer. Well, in the municipal world, 35 hours is a long work week. So lots of time off, good personal life balance. Uh, starting salary range was between 130 dollars and $150,000. And this made all of my students almost fall off their seat the other day when I posted it. This one just came up 
uh, four weeks ago through the Ontario Recreational Facilities Association. And a big part of the qualifications for that job is, is understanding how to procure sports fields uh, and turf that is littered throughout these cemeteries and parks uh, and, and, and recreational facilities. So, um, I've probably gone on too long. I certainly would love to answer some questions if you have any. Um, and if anyone out there is shy, then I would just recommend if you want to learn a little bit more about turf and, and our diploma program here at the University of Guelph, you can go on to the Guelph Turfgrass Institute's website. That's the institute I work with. It's our research facility here at the University of Guelph. The website is www.guelphturfgrass.ca. Um, and if you have any personal questions about the experience for a student, uh, you can email me at gti at uoguelph.ca. Um, I've had many prospective students email me, uh, call me in my office. Just unfortunately, I'm not in my office right now because of COVID. Um, and I will happily tour you through our research plots, through the class, uh, the, the classrooms that you might have, walk you through campus, and explain a little bit about what you might expect between first year, your internship, graduation, and then postgraduate work after that. So thank you very much, everyone, and uh, I'm not sure if there's any questions or not. Yes, Pam, that's amazing. Yeah, we do have one question. One of the questions are, what are the opportunities um, in the field of turf for someone with a high school diploma? Well, so if you are just with a high school diploma and you're trying to get into turf, uh, certainly still a lot of opportunity, but you would hit a glass ceiling. This is actually a glass ceiling I hit myself because I had already pursued a, an education. I had a four-year Bachelor of Arts under my belt in Geography and Environmental Studies, all the while working on a golf course, succeeding and getting promoted along the way. And all of a sudden, I couldn't get past supervisor. And I remember asking my mentors, uh, what I needed to get to get into that management circle because that's where I wanted to be. I wanted to be on salary. I wanted to be in that management circle, the decision making, the budget management, the people management, the training, um, all that kind of stuff. And the quick response was, if you want to make a career of this, you either have to be very, very, very lucky and be in the right place at the right time, or you go back to school and you take your two-year diploma uh, we actually have a 30-day certificate as well, but we find most people that take the certificate just end up loving it so much, they enroll in our diploma program after because they just didn't get enough information from the certificate. And then when you get to higher levels, the certificate, although very credible and recognized, uh, it, it becomes more difficult to compete for top-level positions if your competition have a diploma or a Bachelor of Science in, in Agronomy specializing in turf. So there are opportunities for people straight out of high school, but I would say if you're looking at making a career out of it, um, I'd have to defer to some of the uh, advice that Liz left, which is that post-secondary education is certainly the, the important stepping stone you want to be on if you want to get to, if you aspire to be in a top level management position one day. Does that answer the question well? Thank you so much, Kim. That's fantastic. So I want to thank you for being here and um, thank you to all the panelists. This was fantastic information. Um, and I think maybe some key um, takeaway points that I just want to reiterate from everyone is, is there are lots of training opportunities um, in the field of agriculture from uh, at, you know, uh, Fanshawe College, Conestoga College, both in the food processing and the equipment, um, agriculture equipment operator program, uh, certainly the University of Guelph um, in traditional ag, um, and then some non-traditional um, opportunities such as the turf grass. And, and there are opportunities at every skills level. So wherever you are in your life, um, there are opportunities within ag and there are lots of opportunities um, to grow and advance your skills, but to start where you are. So um, I wanna thank you so much. And if you're looking for positions in ag, certainly there were a lot mentioned today, the um, Grand Deary Jobs Portal, uh, ag careers, and certainly with on each of the college and university um, websites, there are, are jobs um, available through there. So. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. I feel like I learned a lot. I hope you did too. Um, Danette, I'll maybe turn it over to you. 
Thank you, Kim. Um, we just wanted to remind um, the attendees that we do have a survey um, that we're hoping uh, could be completed by the participants um, uh, who took part um, in, in the webinar today. Uh, so I'll leave that up for a few minutes. Um, and yes, just wanted to thank all of our uh, panelists today um, for the information that they shared with the community. Um, and um, for those um, uh, that are on the call still, um, the, um, the information in this webinar will be available on demand through uh, the job, jobskills.bfairs.com website for the next month or so. Um, and we will also have um, the webinars available on the Workforce Planning Board of Grand Erie's um, website. And um, yes, just um, a nod to the Grand Erie Jobs um, job portal as well. Uh, where you can find um, uh, available jobs. Um, and I know a lot of the seasonal jobs uh, for agriculture will often be posted um, as early as December uh, and January. Um, so keep an eye out for those. Um, if you're planning um, for next year, um, if you are interested in seasonal work, um, or if you're a student um, looking to get into the industry, um, or if you're just looking to get into the industry, um, certainly keep your eye on Grand Erie Jobs um, at the end of this calendar year and into the new year as well. So thanks again to everybody. Thank you to Kim for moderating today. And um, any questions that you might have, uh, you can always lean on the Workforce Planning Board of Grand Erie and um, uh, we'll direct you um, to the resources that you need. Thank you. Thank you.